In today's episode, we'll be going over the recent changes in drones. We'll also be talking about the delay in releasing modifications and explaining what's happening to product kits. Hello, tankers! Over the past few episodes, we've been discussing the increase in modifications from 4 to 7. Unfortunately, we've had to push back the release date. Here's why. Before increasing the number of modifications, we need to prepare new kits that will make sense within this new setup. Ok, I know what you're thinking. So I'll say it. Hazel, man, what's the big deal? It's just a few kits, right? Does it really have to take you ages? Oh, right. Ok, we'll wait. So, some people are getting worked up because they're thinking that product kits are disappearing from the game or that they're only gonna be sold for 10 coins. No and no. Kits have disappeared from the garage, but they have simply moved to the showcase. It doesn't make sense to have the same kits in two places, so we've transferred them to where they belong. They will still be sold for crystals, but you also have the option to buy them for 10 coins. Of course, all kits will be reworked to make sense within the new system of 7 modifications. The newly redesigned Viking and Thunder Prime skins are now available for purchase. If you want to get your hands on them, you only have 3 days. The skins will be gone with Monday's restart. After that, your only chance to get them will be from containers, or maybe as rewards from future events. But that's a big question mark. Together with the launch of the redesigned Viking Thunder Prime, we're also tweaking Thunder's mechanics. Now, there will be a delay between when the shot is fired and when it connects with the enemy tank. The delay depends on the distance from the target. Previously, the shot was not affected by anything. You fired and the projectile would hit the target instantly. Now, the projectile will fly at a finite speed. So naturally, the farther a target, the greater the delay to connect. At close range, you are unlikely to feel any difference, but at medium distances, the difference will start to be felt. At long ranges, you'll actually have to compensate for the delay when firing at moving targets. So if the enemy stops abruptly at the moment of the shot, you will miss. For comparison, if Thunder's old firing mechanic was similar to Smokey's, now it will be closer to Gauss. Such changes in mechanics will also affect alterations. So, subcaliber projectiles, which take away area damage and self-damage, will receive an increase in impact force and an increase in the speed of shells. But sledgehammer projectiles, which increase the rate of fire by reducing damage to remote targets, conversely will reduce the speed of the shells. Please note that changes in speed will relate specifically to the speed of the projectiles and not to reload time. The Hyperion drone is now in the game. This week, we performed several tests with drones. Developers, trusted community members, and several YouTubers were involved. In fact, you might have seen some of the reviews of the new drone. We deliberately invited them so that they could get a first-hand feel for the new drone, give it a real run, and share their honest, personal feedback with you, which often does not coincide with ours. Their opinions are based on actual field testing, not on speculation or developers' news. So, if you see reviews where the author just comments on someone else's video, please be aware that they are not based on personal experience. And of course, it's up to you how much weight you want to give such opinions. By the way, if you're making cool videos about Tanky, submit them in the special form, and we might feature them in our vlog. The link to the form is in the description. But back to Hyperion. Before the drones test, one question kept coming up. Why do we need Hyperion? when there are other drones that do almost the same thing. That's not exactly accurate. Before the appearance of Hyperion, Assault and Camper had similar functionality. The Assault drone extended the time of all active supplies when killing an enemy tank, and the Camper accelerated the cooldown of supplies when the tank was at full health. So, for both drones, a prerequisite was required for operation. On the other hand, Hyperion is completely passive. The player doesn't need to do anything to use it. Besides, fitted batteries and supplies, of course. By the way, a quick clarification. Only batteries are consumed over time. The other supplies are consumed upon activation. With Hyperion in the game, Assault will be undergoing some changes. It will no longer extend the active time of supplies. 
Instead, it will reduce the cooldown for double damage, double armor, and speed boost when killing enemy tanks. This means you will need to get kills and activate supplies manually. Now, compare this with Hyperion, which always reduces supply cooldowns, regardless of your actions, but consumes a lot more supplies. So, as always, the choice is yours. Hands-off but more expensive, or manual but cheaper. YouTuber Digest New week, new videos. First, AFF decides to bully Juggernaut on the battlefield using some smart equipment choices. Find out how he does it. Next, Esport takes the new Hyperion drone for a test drive. Curious about what this new baby does? Check it out! Tomorrow, November 30th, we'll be wrapping up the first group stage of the Clan Championship where only the best 8 clans will move on to fight for the championship title. Who will they be? Only the battlefield will decide. Watch the broadcast of these decisive matches, support your favorite team during the live streams, and win prizes. And for those teams who aren't in the clan championship, there's a special tournament, Sandstorm. This is the second edition of the tournament, and it's becoming increasingly popular. If you like this format, watch the live streams and cheer for your participants. Or even better, assemble your team, train hard, and participate in future tournaments yourself. That's all for today. Oh, and before you go, like, subscribe, and ding that bell. See you next week. Last time, you had to guess who would take the flag first. And the correct answer is A. Mammoth. Here are our winners, and here's the new question.